first traditional orthopedic test for the knee I'd like to uh, review with you is the McMurray test. The McMurray test's purpose is to test for a posterior medial meniscus tear. The medial meniscus, as I mentioned when we looked at the slide, is more commonly injured or torn than the lateral meniscus. Again, there's a number of reasons for that. One that I didn't mention when we looked at the slide is that a lot of trauma to our knees happens from a lateral to medial force. So therefore, that gapping happens more at the medial side, and you, you have this gapping and this tearing motion. Another reason I did mention before is that the medial meniscus is attached to the medial collateral ligament. So when that medial collateral ligament gets stretched and sprained, guess what? That medial meniscus also gets stretched and possibly torn and sprained. So how do we test for a medial meniscus possible tear, particularly where it's hard to palpate uh, the medial meniscus posteriorly because it's deep in that joint? So first of all, I mean, you can palpate the knee joint itself and certain areas and some of these anatomical uh, positions and entities that we've gone over. So you can poke the, and, and palpate, I'm sorry, the me medial collateral ligament as it runs up and down the medial side of that knee. You can also palpate for that lateral collateral ligament just to see if the patient has tenderness, if there's swelling, if there's congestion, and so forth. Um, you also can move the patella from side to side. So some of these things are just your basic palpation, visualized examination, and then palpation of the knee. But now, to do the McMurray test, you're going to have the patient flex up their knee. So you're going to bring the knee into flexion, which when the knee comes into flexion, the menisci drop posteriorly. You're going to put your fingers right on the line of the knee joint, especially focusing, of course, on the medial side. You're going to externally rotate the lower leg. So you notice I'm taking her heel and her lower leg and externally rotating it. I'm then going to give a force to gap the medial side of the knee and extend the leg. So again, you flex the knee, get your fingers on the knee uh, line of the tibia, focusing on that medial side. But the other thing you want to do is get your thenar eminence of your hand, if you can, on the lateral side. So you're going to push, you're going to adduct the thigh as you externally rotate the lower leg. So this force here kind of locks out that knee joint and then goes into extension. If there is a tear in the posterior aspect of the medial meniscus, you will typically feel a pop or a click in that meniscus below your fingers on the medial side of that knee joint. Another traditional orthopedic test that you can do when, with the knee to rule in or try and help rule out a meniscal tear is called the Apley's compression test. What you would do it has, is have your patient prone. You would have them simply bend their knee. Now, many times what you would want to do is test the leg or the knee that is not the painful or injured one first, and then test the leg they've come in complaining about. So that, one, you can get an idea of how it feels to test that person's leg, but also then you're going to be able to tell the difference from one side to the other. But the idea here is that you're going to flex the knee, you're going to get your hand on their heel, and dorsiflex the foot so that you can push down and compress their tibia into the femur and therefore compress the menisci. So I'm going to bring the leg into this position. 
I'm going to press down. I could even use both hands if I want. And then you're going to rotate. And therefore, when I come this direction, I might be compressing and emphasizing the medial meniscus. And when I come this direction, I may be focusing more on compressing the lateral meniscus. So first of all, do they have pain when I do this? If they do, that's a positive test. And then also, do they have more pain when I focus on the medial meniscus, or do they have more pain when I focus on the lateral meniscus? So therefore, you, it can maybe help you differentiate also whether you think your differential diagnosis is a tear in the medial meniscus or a tear in the lateral meniscus. And then you would also, of course, again, if this was the leg that, she ca that Catherine came in and did not have pain in, I then would test the leg that does have pain and do the exact same thing. So again, flex the knee, dorsiflex the foot, push down through the heel in a straight shot to compress the menisci, and then rotate from side to side to see which one has the pain. Now, that's the Apley compression test, and its purpose is to see if the patient has pain when you compress the menisci. Beyond that, besides that, you also want to differentiate whether a patient might have a meniscal injury or a collateral ligament injury. So another traditional orthopedic test is called the Apley distraction test, where this time, instead of compressing down to compress the menisci, I'm going to bring my leg up on the table and hold Catherine's thigh down to the table as I grab onto the ankle and distract the tibia away from and distract and gap the joint. Therefore, there is no compression on the menisci. And now I am stretching the collateral ligaments. And now I rotate from side to side to see if, ooh, the patient says, you know, ooh, that hurts on the outside of this leg. What would that tell me? That would tell me that there's a possibility my differential diagnosis or my diagnosis might be concerned about the lateral collateral ligament in this example. If, as I distract and I rotate medially, there's more pain than laterally, that might tell me that the medial collateral ligament is the culprit that has been injured. So these two tests, the Apley compression test is focused on testing the meniscus. The Apley distraction test is focusing on the collateral ligaments and trying to help you determine if there has been a definitive tear in one of these ligaments or the menisci. Another traditional test to uh, examine the collateral ligaments is to give either a varus tension or a valgus tension to the knee. So therefore, what that means is that when we talk about valgus, remember, by memory, that means the leg's going to go into an L shape, come out. And the varus means more bow-legged. So in order to gap the medial collateral ligament, I can give, bring the leg into a little bit of flexion, hold on to the ankle, and give a force from lateral to medial across the knee joint. So I'm pulling out on the ankle and pushing in medially on the knee joint from a lateral to medial position, gapping the medial aspect of this knee joint. If there is pain when I do that, that test would be a positive test for a medial collateral ligament injury. If I reverse my forces and I hold on to the distal ankle, flex the knee a little bit, and give more of a force from medial to lateral, gapping the lateral knee joint. So if I do that on this side, and we flex this knee, and I push from medial to lateral, so I'm doing this motion, gapping this lateral aspect of the knee joint. If there is pain here, that would be a positive test, and it would lead me to believe that the lateral collateral ligament has been injured. So the final 
uh, ligaments of the knee that we need to test from an orthopedic uh, traditional testing perspective are the cruciate ligaments. And there are two tests I would like to go over with you, the uh, drawer test and the Lachman test. I've actually uh, brought Stan onto the table here because I'd like to demonstrate these two tests originally with Stan and then bring Catherine back so that you can see how I am holding on, particularly in the drawer test, to the tibia. So first of all, when you are uh, testing the cruciate ligaments uh, and doing the drawer test, we'll go over that one first, you're going to have the patient flex their knee. So in this situation, we would be having Stan flex his knee and put his foot flat on the table. And then you, the practitioner, would come and sit and lean on to the person's foot. The reason for that is we want to stabilize the tibia. and We don't want the foot sliding on the table. You then are going to grasp on to the proximal tibia. So what I want you to see is that my thumbs are on the anterior surface of the proximal tibia and my fingers are going around and grasping the posterior surface of the proximal tibia so that I can then have a good hold on the tibia proximally and be able to do the drawer test, which means, and stands kind of screwed together, so this isn't going <laughs> to look very realistic, but basically with my hands here, I would move the tibia posteriorly and then draw it anteriorly. So movement of anterior tibia, posterior proximal tibia in order to test those cruciate ligaments. Remember that the anterior and posterior cruciates are named for their attachments on the tibia. So the anterior cruciate ligament stabilizes the tibia from moving too far forward and the posterior cruciate ligament stabilizes the tibia from moving too far posteriorly. So therefore it's telling you if you pull forward and there's increased laxity, the anterior cruciate is the culprit or the injured ligament. If there's laxity or too much laxity and pain when you push backward, then that means the tibia is too lax moving backward and therefore the posterior cruciate is the uh, culprit injured ligament. So that's the drawer test. What I also wanted to go over you, with you with Stan before I bring Catherine in is the Lachman test. The Lachman test is solely testing the anterior cruciate ligament. And what you need to do is, again, have your patient laying supine on a table. You're going to grasp their femur, which obviously on a live patient is grasping through the entire soft tissue of the thigh. With Stan, it's pretty easy to do. <laughs> but you'll notice when, you, when Catherine comes back, or even with a larger patient, it might be with people with small hands, difficult test for you to perform well but you need to grasp on to the thigh and the femur and stabilize it. You also want to lift the thigh so that the knee flexes a bit. And then you are going to grab on to the tibia, uh, the proximal tibia, and then that is when you are going to pull the tibia forward, feeling for laxity. I can also withstand, demonstrate that more from this leg, so maybe you could see that I hold it better, is that again, I'm grasping on to the thigh, and stabilizing the femur, then I'm grasping on to the proximal tibia, and then I would draw the tibia, the proximal tibia forward in the Lachman test. If this is lax and the tibia comes forward and there's a lot of pain, then that is concerning for an anterior cruciate tear. So now with Catherine, our live model back, let's demonstrate the drawer test first, followed by the Lachman test again. So I'm going to come around and ask Catherine to flex this knee for me. And again, you'll see you're going to have the patient flex their knee and have their foot flat on the table. You are then going to stabilize their foot by sort of literally sitting on their fo the forefoot in order to stabilize the foot and therefore also stabilize the lower leg. Then you are going to grasp onto that proximal tibia. So you'll notice my thumbs are going kind of right where they did on stand, but obviously through the soft tissues of the live patient. Then my fingers are coming around, grasping the posterior aspect of that tibia through the soft tissues. And now I have a good grasp on this tibia, and you'll notice I'm able to distract posteriorly 
and then draw forward. So push backward and pull forward. So draw this tibia backward and forward with the idea in mind of feeling if there is more motion in one direction versus the other, or does it feel stable and secure, or does it feel lax in, and too loose in one of those directions? And again, if the tibia is too lax coming anteriorly, then that's concerning for an anterior cruciate ligament tear. If it's too lax going posteriorly, then that is concerning for a posterior cruciate ligament tear. So that's the drawer test. The final orthopedic test I wanted to go over again and now demonstrate with Catherine as a live model is the Lachman test. So again, you're going to grasp on to the femur but through all the soft tissues of the thigh. So let me show you on this side that my hand is not, you know, a huge hand to begin with. And so sometimes this test is for also for me a difficult test because you need to be able to grasp on to the tissues and be able to lift that thigh and flex that knee. And for folks with hands my size or smaller, we're going to have a hard time doing this. But it is obviously an excellent test when you can do it well. The other hand is to grasp onto the proximal tibia, stabilize the femur, and lift on the proximal tibia. I'm lifting this way. So, so you can see that maybe a little better. Let's show on the other leg. I'm grasping this femur, flexing this knee, grasping onto the tibia in this position, and then I am anteriorly drawing or pulling upward towards the ceiling that proximal tibia. If it feels lax and it comes, which Catherine does not, um, it is a, if it is lax, it's a positive test and it is concerning for an anterior cruciate ligament tear or possibly sprain. Now that we have demonstrated the different traditional orthopedic tests for the knee, I want to take a moment and make sure you understand how those orthopedic tests apply when you have a patient come in with knee pain. First of all, when anyone comes to you with knee pain, you want to do all of the tests I just demonstrated because they will help you either rule in or rule out in your mind and in or out of your differential diagnosis a concern for a tear in any one of these main structures of the knee. Again, the collateral ligaments, the cruciate ligaments, or the menisci. If one of these tests are positive, positive and significantly positive, then you need to be imaging the knee and most typically you would use an MRI. If these tests are negative and none of them seem to be overly positive and there isn't much pain and there isn't laxity, then there, that is helping you see that there isn't a primary tear or a concern that needs imaging of this knee and it helps you to feel comfortable moving forward with your osteopathic manipulation of that knee with confidence. So at this time, with that in mind, again, if a patient comes in with knee pain, let's go back to the very beginning of this course when I spent time explaining that we are a whole unit. So therefore, when a patient comes to me, for example, with knee pain, I would start out actually obviously taking their history, looking their past medical history, all the normal traditional ways of, of taking a good full history of a patient, and then my examination would actually start with their spine and their pelvis and I would correct any issues I find there and then I would work my way out towards the extremity. Then I would do these traditional orthopedic tests that I've just demonstrated for that knee to either again rule in or rule out a possible tear to a specific structure. Again, if those tests are all negative, it makes me very confident that this is more a somatic dysfunction concern and I can work from an osteopathic manual medicine perspective. So at this time, with the, with the thought that the tests are negative, I would move forward uh, and the first category of technique I'd like to cover next with you are the soft tissue techniques for the knee and also the hip since we did not cover them earlier. Please remember 
that with soft tissue techniques, we are working on preparing the tissues possibly for a more direct uh, technique. But we are also trying to open the circulatory and lymphatic drainage path pathways so that we can drain edema and drain congestion and also improve blood flow to the tissues so that we can start to help the tissues that might have become fibrosed from a chronic problem and help them to be able to loosen up and become more supple and to start healing.